Greetings to you all nation, people of Israel. We're here on this excellent, most beautiful, very pleasant day here in the southern parts of the United States. Yisrael, feed yourself. I want to begin this session. I, I, I want to answer a few questions or posts that were generated from videos. And not only that, then I want to show you some more of the husbandry. I want to ask you all a question. I want you to ponder this. If the nation of Yisrael is only a curse, vile, trifling, repugnant, wicked people, and everyone is of that nature, what is the message of Hamashiach? Not only that, show me in the United States, you see the vast of Hebrew Israelites on every corner in every major city. They have claimed the territory almost like gangsters. Nobody else can go on that corner. That's a fact. Show me a pattern of an example of the first 14 verses of Dibari, the blessing, the riches, whereby you see a people living together. They have their own banking. It's not that they can't do it, but they can. They can bank. They can have their own banking systems and all of that. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of people to do that. Can you imagine what one of those organizations with a thousand people a part of it, what they could do and the monies they could raise and the uh, construct of businesses and employment. You can you imagine what they would do? And those members of those organizations will die for their leaders. They got one they call the Holy Ghost. I don't care about that. I don't give a damn. But because I would say, damn the Holy Ghost. It's a deceitful lie. It is a corrupt thing. And if you understood uh, etymology of words, etymology, you would never call Haruach that. But show me in these states or anywhere in the world. Well, in the land of Yisra, El Demona, I'll stop that people. Those people are in their little conclave. And they live independently. Show me where they have taken all their resources and brought it together. And they can say to those Ashkenazis, we're going to buy this land. We, we, we got lawyers to litigate for us. Show me, please. I, I want to know, is it just that they are cursed? Why were the first 14 verses put there? It doesn't make sense to me because the Torah doesn't teach that. They don't even know what the word curse means. Those on the corner cannot even tell you how many times or the variations of that word in Torah, they don't know. I'm an old man. I know I'm a student of this book, and that's a fact. How do we feed ourselves? Let me answer this question first. One writes posts on this video. I don't answer the polls. That I heard you said that it's expensive to grow organically. It's not that expensive. It's inexpensive. Let me say this to you, ma'am, sir, whomever you are. It is false to think that organic farming is cheap. If it was that cheap, why would not it be so inexpensive in the stores? It is the most expensive food. It costs you more. An organic cow, and I will show you one today, purely organic. It costs more. You may have a few pots or a little small area you farm in. That's not farming. It's truly not gardening. Have you ever put out 15,000 sweet potato slips? 4,000 watermelons are better, nearly 5,000. Having to take them to the market. And, or let me ask you this question. Have you ever sold 100 acres nearly of corn even in ignorance you had no idea the, the 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 volume of work it would take the amount of gas you try doing that with an oxen my friend or plowing the field all i'm saying that we don't have even any kind of legitimate knowledge of things and you tell me or you quote to us 
that um, it's inexpensive. Ma'am, sir, those little remedies you have may work on some occasions, but they don't work. You cannot do that cheap up there. You cannot drip irrigate, run irrigation cheap. It costs money. We have black mulch that it gives us the protection of our crop. We have a drip irrigation from this pond here. All the water goes from that pond to irrigate that garden. There's nearly three acres of gardening space over there. You can't do that cheap, ma'am. You can take some little remedies from organic novice or those that organically grow. You will notice that organic seeds are much more expensive than non-organic seeds. You will notice, for an example, I. But one loaf of bread costs $5. That the conventional bread, I could have got it for 89 cents a loaf. 99. It costs to farm organically. We're not farmers, we grow in a level of intensity. It costs money. And the reason I'm saying that, I want to show you all just one little simple piece of equipment we have that will plant seeds, cut through the mulch, cut through the plastic. It's not cheap. That's the most expensive product in any store an organic product. It costs, it takes a lot of nurturing. Well, the soil, ah, oh, it's easy to grow something in a pot or a container. If you look at our raised beds over here, they're gorgeous. That's easy. It doesn't take as much, but when you go and fertilize that, it costs money. It takes a lot of finance. It costs. You cannot do it cheap. To keep our cows in the condition we do, and our goats, I'm gonna feed the goats. I wanna show you part of that. It's not inexpensive. So uh, I will be answering some of the comments as I uh, come before you, us, uh, 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 Hebrews feed yourself. And it begins with one principle. You got to learn how to love each other. You got to stop calling each other that epithet, one of the most violent, reprehensible words there is. You curse each other. You curse each other more than this wicked white man. More than your Esau, all right? One question I want to ask all of you all, that Hebrew is light. You see the complexion of my skin? Now, my cameraman, his skin is much lighter than mine. I ask you all a question. Unless I said I was uh, one of Yisrael, you look into the com contextual, uh, 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 my skin contexture or, or color. I was born in the United States of America. Well, let me ask you a question. If I show you in the records of my heritage that my father, my, what, what in the lineage of my father, he put 18 babies in a white woman. Listen to me. He was a Hebrew, right? By your standards, he was a Hebrew as white. He put 18 babies in this woman. And out of those 18 babies, he produced 12 sons and six daughters. And the complexion of the sons were like his complexion. Beautiful, tannish, lighter. And when the Caucasian women saw that, they just fell in love with him because they were handsome men, strong and virile and big like me, my, my, even my natural father. All those sons of Hebrew Israelites, right? I'm just quizzing you what you would say. Then what would that make <clears throat> one <clears throat> whose father was progenerated by the master taking his mother, going into her, going into her and produce a volume of sons and those sons, all of those sons took on what we call Hebrew women. He was a white man. He was a white man. They took on women of our color. They produced, produced sons. And out of one of those sons from the white master, I came from that. What am I? Tell me what I am. Prove it. You are people that say prove all things. You prove nothing. You have a volume of words, and that's it, loud, but you don't prove anything. 
You twist things. Uh, let me show you something. We're going to do a little husbandry today. Hebrews, feed yourself. Learn how to care for each other and stop being so corrupt. You don't give a damn about each other. You don't even care about each other. I'm forthright. I'm honest. And that's the only way it's going to start. Show me where there is any Hebrew that's blessed in America. We have no Hebrew that's blessed. You on the corners, why should I listen to you? Come on, let's see a little bit of husband. Yep. 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 Goat feeding time. Yep. 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 All right, we're going to feed the goats. As I said in the last videos, we at one time had nearly 300 goats. Goats do not fare as well you in a climate like this or anywhere, really, unless you have hundreds of acres. They need range to forge. Sheep, they do much better. Yep. We're going to feed the goaties, all right? Hard-headed. No. Watch these goats. They are so selfish. The male goats would not let anybody get anything. That's what we are. That's why I took that goat offering, all right? have these preferences here because you see that male will go down the line suck up every drop of corn put it in his guts and chew the cud just egurgitate that all day long so it's enough room for them to stick their head in there and get some they'll get it all but they would actually just go like see that one right there see this female right here all that corn she's so worried about keeping everyone else away She'll go down the line, or like this Billy here, they will not allow anyone, especially him. I've seen him go down the line and just take everything. And so the goats don't fare as well here as with the sheep. So the sheep do well. And so these are the things you can do. You can raise, you got this component of liars today. They tell you you can't eat chicken, you can't eat turkey. Let me say this. They're fools. A turkey is not a derivative of a buzzard. Turkeys eat berries and things like that. They don't eat and look for rotten carcasses. They don't eat stuff like that. We have thousands of turkeys around here. Uh, you see them on these lands here. They run all around and they're everywhere. So we have thousands of turkeys everywhere. And they eat berries and grain and things of that nature. They don't eat rotten things. They eat those kinds of things. And that's all they do. They eat things of that nature. So chickens the same way. Chickens will peck on things that are rotten. But chickens love grains and things of that nature. That's what they want. They do not run around looking for dead caucuses. So question to you, my friend. You can't eat turkey or chicken. What kind of fowls can you eat? Y'all told us we can eat fowl. This is the stupidity of this young, silly generation. They don't know how to balance it. They don't. And so they say things that they have not examined. They can't even define 
even the words that Yah tells us. These are the things we cannot eat. So we eat chicken here. The matter of fact, second part of this video later on today, before we send this out, I'm going to show you one of my beautiful recipes. That it's going to be a habanero, uh, habanero mango chickens I'm preparing for our Shabbat meal. And my Isha is preparing the Daughters of Zion. But I'm preparing that. Uh, I'm going to stuff it with habanero, uh, and jalapeno peppers, and mango. And I'm going to broil that. Just make it nice, crispy, and brown in the oven. All right? Uh, but these are our goats. I really don't want to have that many goats. Maybe 30 at the minimum, the maximum. We could butcher them during feast days. They just don't fare as well. They don't fare as well. Let me give them the rest of this. No use of taking that. And by the way, we do purchase corn. These farm boys around here would not call it organic. They use turkey litter and chicken litter. They use all kinds of litter. Well, that's gross. Ma'am, sir, let me ask you this. Where do you think the waste of New York goes, New York City, the metro? Where do you think that waste goes? You can't bury that. What do you think? You can't bury it. And so where it goes, my friend, is that uh, that is put on barges out in the river, and, and that waste is put through kilns, just like the waste in Charlotte. These farmers use all that. There is one family of farmers here. They get all the waste from, you can't even get any. I've tried to put it on the pastures to make the grass grow luscious because the nitrogen content. So if you eat, you drink orange juice, you use anything like that, that waste goes to fertilize orchards throughout Florida, the whole state of Florida, and everywhere. They've always done that in Canada and other countries. You will see it here in this area. They will not call it organic. They just call it some, some waste on it, some bush bush, all right? That's what they would do. Let's, we're gonna take one more journey because my cameraman has to go to work. I want to show you, this is part of the husband tree. Wonderful. And I'll show you our beautiful cows that we have raised. We at one time had we had 87 cows, I believe, but we have given them away to help others. And so we reduced the cows because they, it costs to raise cows. You call yourself eating or, an organic cow, you tell me it doesn't cost? Mm -hmm. It costs, my friend. Feed a cow organically from the grass and the fertilizer. Can you imagine fertilizing a thousand acres? I don't care what you say, you gotta put fertilizer on it. The only soil and the only way you will be able to feed or grow cheap organically is that you have about 5,000 acres. It's all clear land. And you farm virgin soil every year. That's the only way. That is the only way. You can put anything in virgin soil, never been touched, it will grow. The next year you will get nothing unless you began to improve the content of the soil. So there you that mean well, but doesn't, it doesn't imply that you have knowledge of those matters. You really don't. We just did some bartering, bartering here. There's a man that farms and he has turkey houses and things. He takes the turkey waste and he puts that on his farm. So we did a job for him grinding tree stumps. So we traded that off for wheat. We'll put wheat in the fields during the uh, winter. We trade it off, we get wheat and corn. That's how we do things. Can you imagine if true Hebrew Yisraelites really had the conscience of what it took? Can you imagine the kind of money? There, the, I remember years back, there was one community in Chicago. They spent $27 million a week on lottery. Poor people. 
No, my friend, you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite. You that are in organizations together, why don't you all do that? Why don't you buy houses in that city, renovate them, you all live together. You know why you can't do it? Because you don't give a damn about each other. I'm straight up. Come on, let me take you. To another part of our husband tree, all right? Let you see what we do around here. We're gonna take your journey. All right. Yes, yes, this is my, I call this my Cadillac. This is my Cadillac here. This is my Cadillac. This is how I get around. This is a big place. what you will pay for this kind of meat in the store this is pure angus black angus check the market today and see what you will pay for an organic steak all right he's the big boy yep 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 Our cows. Now here come the big man here. Tabernacle will butcher one of these. The one with the horns over there, he will be dangerous in his days. Beautiful herd of cows here. Yep. See that big prize bull there? He's an Angus. Pure blood. Yep. Look at his babies. You can't go to the store and buy a black Angus steak for dollar ninety-nine cents a pound, ma'am. Whoever you all are, it costs money to do this. You see the beautiful scuffadines of the grapes over here? We're gonna take you through all of this. I don't want to overbear us. It costs money to fertilize them perf perfectly. 
You can make some of your own fertilizer, but it's not going to work every time. You can make things that kill the, the aphids and, and, the, uh, and things of that nature. You can do that, but it's not going to work every time. And we will go to, Vir to Virginia the first of the year, and we'll spend about $2,000 because that will be enough to take us through really two or three growing seasons. But it's, it's a beautiful, uh, the results are just great. Look at him, he's a big boy. He's a man boy. So we have little calves. You will, you will call them calves. These were what you will call yearlings. These are cows here. Now you see him coming. We're going to eat him during tabernacle. In every kind of way you can cook beef, our daughters and myself, we're going to make beef sausages. We got, we got free range roosters I've raised. We're going to make sausages and everything out of them. So that's how we do things. It's not inexpensive. For you to do things in pots, you got about 20 pots, ah, it doesn't take much, but for you to do things on a scale like this, it's quite expensive. It's going to cost. And to raise beautiful cows like this, and let me say to you, we'll show you that when we butcher you one. You don't have that fatness like you do in the stuff in the store. It is a marble with very little fat, but it is some of the best tender meat. You can never eat any meat more tender than cows raised like this. We don't put no hormones in these every six months, every year. There is no way, but there are times when they get beyond our ability to medicate, we will take penicillins and put in that. You're silly, and if you think that doesn't happen, you're real silly, all right? You're real silly. You think just giving them some, some herbs is gonna help, that's silly. At times you have to do things like that. But as far as medicating them, we don't do that. We never have. And for anyone to tell you that does any kind of farming, look at this herd right here. Look at all these, look at these cows. They're healthy. They're healthy cows. You know, someone tell you organic honey. Now that is so silly in the concept that the bee that pollinates the GMO corn, they're gonna come here and set their ass on our corn. That's silly of us to think like that. And so he drops a little bit of the GMO corn DNA on our stuff. And for you to think it doesn't happen, that's stupid. You will have to be in a place whereby you own a piece of land, whereby you have at least 100 mile clearance all around you, because those bees will travel for the queen. They're gonna get that nectar for her to live and to make more babies. So to think like that is just silly. Well, we're in a position where that, no, nah, them bees will go 10, 20 miles. They will travel that far. Bees are not like they used to be when we came here. We had hives everywhere. We're gonna start back next fall because it's, you got to have beehives to grow, all right? You got to. All right, give them another shot of those, those cows. Is that a newborn down there? Yes, sir, look like it. So we have beautiful Angus bulls and beautiful cows, all right? All right, we got cows everywhere. We're going to have a great, great time at Tabernacle. Can I say, let me say this to you all. Yisrael, we came here broke. We didn't have money. I came here 23 years ago. 24 years next year. It's beyond 23 years, let me put it this way. I have an Isha that was sleeping me on the ground. She will go with me. But I say to us, I've never lied to my wife. 
because I've never desired another woman. I've never done anything. I've not, I have never had to lie to her. These dogs out here telling you two and three wives, no marriage license. Let me say this. You got five wives. There are states that they recognize what they call common law marriage, and this is one of the states. But woman, if you, your husband dies and you got three young ones, and the social security becomes a problem, your communities are not even like the Muslims because they will take care of each other. You're not going to get it, all right? There are states like Ohio, there are states like Texas, there are states like South Carolina. These are what they call the neo states. Southern conservative. These are the only states where there's a great battle to get it. You're an older woman, you live with a man, you call it a marriage, but it's not a marriage. Because even in Torah, the marriage was, there was a contract. There was a license. You have to pay up front. These bastards, but they are. Where's the dowry? We do we gotta do it right, all right? What dowry you paid for that woman? So they're bogus, they're full of lies, and they're corrupt. This way we can live in our community. The state, this state doesn't bother us because they know us. Can I give you one example before I go a little further? Now you cannot have a legitimate school in any state. You see our school there? We have a legitimate school over there. Let me get you a little closer. This is a legitimate registered school in the state of South Carolina. When we hand a diploma to our students, it is as credible as any high school. They can go to any college, the matter of fact, this is Teshua Hebrew Academy. This is our school. I wanted to show you this before we conclude on this part. And the next time, we'll do the cooking part. This is our academy here. show you I'm saying this to tell you this I want you to understand so you have everything in context in order to have a school in the state of South Carolina it must be a registered school compliance to all the regulations and laws period our children don't take shots anything like that but we do Every year we have to send them a written document, with the parent's signature, that our children are exempt from that. The reason I'm saying that because we had one student, she was a bright student. She was actually doing college algebra in the 11th grade. She left the community and then she goes out as many of you Hebrews who smoke some dope. She was in the Air Force and she had qualified for an air traffic patrolman's job. Now she works at Taco Bell because she thought dope, smoking weed was more important. Now the reason I'm saying all that is this. Our academy here is a school that when the inspectors come, last year the inspector came. I was out working. I had on a red shirt like this. Adam Tom, he had an orange church, church, like this. You must understand that's the color of Clemson University. This is the color of University of South Carolina, the Gamecocks. So you said you're a Gamecock fan? I said I take no entertainment from the Gamecocks or Clemson because he had on his Clemson trip with a name there. Because those that work in this area, a lot of them especially, 
horticulturists and all of them, they graduated from Clemson or University of University of Atlanta. When he saw this place, let me show you now. There are laws, but there are those that know how to adjudicate, and that's the only experience I've had with all the rednecks, the brown necks, the Edomites and all. He looked at our community. You know what his words were to me? I don't need to see your records. I said, no, our attendant is going to get you the records. You can go inside the school, examine it to make sure that we have all this done. He said, I don't need it. He said, when I come in this place and see what I see, I know your records are straight. We talked about a little about football and all that. He had out here. He said, in all the years he had worked for the educational system for like 20 or 30, 30, about 30 years. He said, I didn't even know you all were here. I said, we've been here 23 years at that time. You see, that's the kind of standard. And not because you capitulate and bow down. We don't do that here. But we know the standard of rules. Well, no, no, sir, now you're a jackass. Because you get on the highway, 200 miles an hour and see what happens. All right, sir, don't play that with me, okay? These folks telling you you don't get driver's license. That doesn't impede me. It doesn't bother me one bit. It's silly. Tell them to get on the highway, do 100 miles an hour, see what happens. They're full of jive. They got this mixture of some kind of crazy talk they talk, but it's not a y'all. Listen, nation. Listen, people. You all start getting together. Can I say this to you in the close? They are natural families, all here in the South. If they get together and they are by 100 acres and everybody, they don't portion it off. Everybody in the family can put a house there. All they do is get together once again and pay the taxes. And they pay the taxes on their own little place. They do it all the time. I'm talking about men and families of my youth. They do it all the time. And what astounded me above all things when, the, when I was living in Charlotte, there was a man, his name was Buntia Sahara. He was from, uh, uh, from Laos. They were people that would get together if I needed a house. Everybody, that, you know, three or four hundred of them, everybody get five hundred dollars, enough to pay for a thirty thousand dollar house. And that's how they did it. I said, how do you pay them back? Oh, no, 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 we don't pay back. Oh, my friend, we go, we bought two cows the other day. And they go buy two cows, it's cheap. And they butcher the cows, nothing is thrown away, they take everything. And everybody got food. Why is it that you Hebrews don't do that? I don't believe in a Hebrew, a true, Yisrael, yeah, like getting food stamps. I can understand the great agony of a daughter, babies she didn't know. I sympathize with that. But if they're true men of Yisrael, yeah, then you create that environment to help. People don't want to come and live with us because you have to put down your job mess, all of that foolishness. You can't do it here. You need to learn how to feed yourself above all spiritually. And then you need to learn how to grow food and eat. We got plenty here. You understand? We got so much in the garden, the garden that I showed you. We can't eat it all. What will we do? Well, it's all organic. So we'll cut it up and feed it to the goats. Organic goats, all right? You understand? That's how we're doing. So stop that mess. We do it right. May y'all be rocking your shoes. Okay. Ready? Yes, sir. All right, greetings, my friend. I, as I informed you this morning, I said that feeding Yisraya Ela, Yisraya El, learn to feed yourselves. I said that I was going to show you some of my cooking for today for the Shabbat. My Isha has done rotisserie chickens. We have a rotisserie that will do about 27 birds at one time. And so I said, no, I will do mine independently of yours. So I want to show you what we have today for Shabbat and Sunday. We're going to we're gonna have sandwiches and things like that so we can just have a great time with each other. Let me show you what I have here. This is, uh, ah, I have some, we have hunters here. This here is some, uh, oh, that looks so delicious. Some rosemary, jalapeno. I use um, uh, pineapple, apple, orange, and mango juice, and this has, all of this in here. Now, don't tell me what is clean and unclean. I know this is clean. These are duck breasts that hunt the hunters around here. 
uh, gave to me, one did, and these are duck breasts here. And this is just a, enough for a few individuals. That's why I baked them. But look at this. Ah. You can purchase things like uh, organic chickens. Now, I don't like Walmart. I despise those greedy pigs. But I can go to Walmart, and they have here in North Carolina. You can get the organic chickens, and they're not that expensive. You can get one for about 6 $7. You also can purchase the uh, chickens that, uh, that have no biotics or anything like that in them, which is, you know, that's, that's all right uh, to do that. And uh, I want to show you what I have here. This is, let me stop this. This is some, some Hawaiian mango habanero with habanero mango with mangoes I put in here, chicken that I, uh, I, I baked today. This will be for tomorrow. Let me show you what that looks like. Get out of here, man. See that? Now I did this, my precious friend Akiwasadak, he loves spices. And he loves it to be hot. And so this, and everyone will enjoy these, uh, this is spicy here. The spice is hot, you can see the mangoes in here, has that kind of grilled texture to it. And this is going to be fabulous uh, with some nice uh, jalapeno, uh, tacos or wraps and things like that. Now, I don't go for the wraps and things like that. I, I don't, it's not my thing. And so that would be enough with my initial did six birds. And let nobody tell you chickens are unclean. They're silly. They're so silly. I'm going to sit this here and let this rest. Then I'll cover it back. We're gonna eat this on tomorrow with pasta and, and all kinds of wonderful things. We'll eat that. And then this is, these are whole chickens here. As I said, go to Walmart. You can find them quite inexpensive. I don't recommend Walmart. Places like Whole Food, they're gonna cost you $10 a bird. Walmart have those at a free range. And this is just a kind of crusted uh, let me show you the spices I use. No sodium or anything. And I buy all of my spices. This is a Thai spice here. That's what these uh, duck breasts are. Thai spice. They have no sodium or anything in here. I get them from Spice Spice Incorporation. You want spices, you got high blood pressure, anything like that, that's a wonderful place to go to. And this is kind of a crusted chicken, but it's nice and tender and soft. We'll see what my Ima Rafa does with that. All right, I stuffed them with habaneros and stuff them inside with mangoes and all of that. So I think it's going to be quite delicious. What do you think, my friend? Yes, sir. Yes, all sir. Right. I know that right. And so we have this ready. We're going to let this set. I'm going to cover this. As I said to you, Yisraya, we must learn how to feed ourselves. And you cannot continue in the, in the uh, rhetoric of what we and many of these organizations are saying. You got to define who are blessed you must show the people an example what the riches of your blessings are because I will not fall under that delusion that many, that's the only thing you know, we are cursed, we are cursed. But that's not what the Torah says. In the nation that cursed Yisra Ya'ela, they're all cursed. And so who's blessed? What will be the blessings of this nation? What will constitute that? Houses and land? What will be the prosperity of this nation? If the nations of the world that have cursed the nation, they are cursed. So what would be? He, gave, he gives us a prerequisite. If you do this, this what would be. I'm to say that all the nation is under the great strength of that. Really the word curse in its greatest of essence, it means uh, you are trifling. That's what it really means. You're going to learn something tomorrow if you join us on the Shabbat. Uh, we're going to enjoy this. I tell you, we're going to enjoy this. I am. I love to cook for y'all's people. We're going to enjoy this. If I showed you the cows earlier, this is late in the evening. If I showed you those cows and everything, how we're going to cook for tabernacle, we're going to have a great time. And we're just going to enjoy it. That's what we should do. We're blessed. We're rich. We have an abundance. We have more 
as a people, a, a simply wealth monetarily, a 13th largest nation in the world. So it's not that we don't have wealth. Our leaders live, uh, they, want to, um, they want to live superbly. They want to live above and beyond the people. And these many uh, organizations today, as the one that was just indicted on the federal charges, he's going to prison. You can say what you want to. He can get the finest of the lawyers. The man is going to prison. It's two things you don't do. You don't lie to a judge, and you don't steal the governor's or the government's money. You ask Miss Hamsley, a billionaire, she went to prison. Uh, uh, what's the one's name that, uh, uh, with all of the uh, housewearing things, uh, Martha Stewart, she went to prison. There's a preacher right here in Charlotte. He, 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 he took millions. He went to prison. He had Bentley and all. Lamborghini, he had all that, 13 cars. You don't steal money from the government. The government doesn't matter if you make a trillion. Just pay them theirs. This individual that calls himself a Hebrew to live like that, it is not even ridiculous. Come on, my son. It is not even any kind of honor or any kind of integrity for a man to say he loves Yah. Listen. If I sent my children to a private school, then all the children should go. I cut relationship with the man one time because uh, he said that he wanted to send his children to college and all of that for us to assist him. And I was helping that work. And I said, I will not do that. I will help you if you're going to start something for all the children and they all come to school together. As I informed you, our school is a registered school in the state of South Carolina. We have no problem with the government. We don't have no problem. Because if you're a bona fide strong man, you won't have a problem with the government. I don't have no problem with these racist white folks or, or any other kind. None whatsoever. I don't have to tell them my presence commands regard and honor. My speech commands it. My interaction commands it. So I don't have to tell them. And they know who I am. I just got a letter from one of the government officials. Reach David Yisrael. That's how they address that. So we as a nation of people, we must learn how to feed ourselves. And you began with this great dietary food substance. It is called a chava. It's love. That you learn how to love each other, care for each other. And then when you do that, you learn how to feed each other. You learn how to come together. You can form your own banks, your own institutions, your own money. Well, no one wants to do it. Well, you start, my friend. I came here. I started. Uh, I sold my nice suburban home, and I came here. I gave all the money to you. So if you began, leaders live such, sub, such lifestyles that is insane. You know, the children in private school, uh, Mercedes Benz picking them up, a, a service to pick them up in large cities, that's, that's evil. I don't care who it is. That's just flat out evil. When you all buy an apartment building, you're afraid to relocate because you don't want to suffer a little bit. You do that, then you can learn how to feed yourself, to grow food, to grow all kinds of food, to create little enterprises that, well, you know, local businesses, not no enterprise, uh, you know, selling cakes and baking cookies and things, uh, organically and all of those kinds of things, uh, making clothes and all those things, making clothes. Uh, we have done all of that for making clothing. People see our clothing for our children, they want it for their children, to making clothes and all of that. But to make clothes and things like that, what they were selling them for, I say, you're not going to do that. Because the Amish sell theirs three or four rounds of clothes. And what you are selling this for, you're just working for nothing. No, you're not gonna let, I'm not going to let you do that. And so there are so many things that you can do that will create the kind of environment that you need. We have our own parts, everything for our children. Well, they are reclusive. No, our children do more and see more things than you as an adult. And I will guarantee you that. You're locked in your cities. You can't go nowhere but catch the bus back into the work. You gotta catch it to the grocery store unless you get someone to take you. So our cities have seen the gamut of things. Believe me, my friend. All I'm saying that we must learn how to feed ourselves. 
We can't depend on nobody but yourself. Period. And by the way, I blessed of Yah greatly. Work hard. Blessed of him. Yavrak. See you on the Shabbat. Join us on the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. All right, my friend. Shalom. Let me give my son an embrace. That's it. All right, son. All right, Yavrak. All right, Yavrak. All right, Shalom.